Hi, in this lesson, we'll learn about compound Boolean expressions. Let's go. In previous lessons, we learned about how to use if-else statements to create alternate paths that e execute different commands depending on the outcome of the Boolean expression. Using what we've learned about if-else statements, let's implement a password class. Imagine we were building a program where users had to create and input a password in order to create an account on our site. We might start by creating a password class that takes a password string as its input and sets the value of the private string password to the value input by the user. Here is an example of what that might look like. In order to make this program more useful, let's add a method that tests the strength of the user's password. Let's call that method password strength. The implementation of password strength is as follows. If the password is greater than eight characters, we will print password strength good. Otherwise, we will print password strength bad. Can you implement this based on what we've learned so far? Pause the video and try to solve this problem. Based on the lessons we've learned so far, we can implement this method by using an if-else statement. If the password length is longer than eight, then we will print that the strength is good. Otherwise, we will print that the strength is bad. But let's say that we wanted to make the password strength even more sophisticated. Suppose we learned that adding a pound sign in front of the password actually makes it more secure. So we want to make sure all users are doing the same. How can we actually implement this in our program by testing more than one thing at a time to make a decision? We can achieve this implementation by adding another Boolean expression to our if statement using logical operators. Logical operators allow programs to make decisions based on multiple conditions. In our example, we would like password strength to print good if the length of the password is greater than eight and the password starts with a pound sign. This requires us to connect multiple conditions together in one if statement. These are the different logical operators that can be used in conditional statements. Let's explore how each of these can be used. The NOT operator evaluates a condition to the opposite Boolean value. In this example, if x is equal to true, NOT x is equal to false. We can use the NOT operator to change the value of a Boolean expression every time an action is taken. In this example, we are setting the value of light on to true. When we go to the next line of code, the value of light on has been set to NOT light on. Since light on was true, not light on evaluates to false and now has been assigned to light on. If we were building a smart home app that needed to record when the lights in a house were on or off, this simple not operator would be useful to keep changing the value of light on every time the light changed status. The end operator evaluates whether all conditions in an expression are true. If any of the statements evaluate to false, then the final expression of the Boolean expression will be false. You may want to study this table in a bit more depth on your own. Let's look at this example. The Boolean variable is beautiful day evaluates the result of is sunny and is warm. It can only be a beautiful day if it is sunny and it is warm. When we evaluate is beautiful day, the final expression will be false because is warm is false. If any Boolean expression evaluates to false in an and expression, the final expression will evaluate to false. When we print the value of is beautiful day, the result will be false. If we change the value of is warm to true, however, the result will change. Is beautiful day now evaluates to true because the value of is sunny and is warm both evaluate to true. The final result printed will be true. The OR operator allows us to evaluate whether any of the conditions in a Boolean expression are true. If any condition using OR is true, then the final expression will evaluate to true. This is another table worth taking a deeper look at. Let's look at an example. In this program, we are evaluating whether or not someone can go on a field trip. The student can go on the trip if they have a permission slip or they are over 13 years old. We can set this up by using an OR statement. Can go on field trip will evaluate to true if the student has permission slip or is over 13. In this example, because the student has permission slip, the resulting Boolean expression evaluates to true as one of the two conditions is true. Can go on field trip will evaluate to true when printed 
so this student can go on the trip. Because end expressions evaluate to false if any condition is false, and or will evaluate to true if any condition is true, there is a shortcut we can utilize to make our programs run more efficiently. If the first value of a Boolean expression is false in an AND operation, or the first value is true in an OR operation, the remaining conditions are irrelevant. Because these expressions will always evaluate to false and true respectively, regardless of what the other expression evaluates to, Java will not evaluate the second expression. This process of skipping the second condition in a Boolean expression is called short circuit evaluation. For end expressions, if the first condition is false, then we don't bother evaluating the second condition because we know that the expression will evaluate to false. For OR, if the first expression is true, we don't evaluate the second because we know that the expression will evaluate to true. Let's take a look at an example. In this program, we want to know if we have enough pizza for the number of people that we invited to our party. If the number of slices divided by the number of people is greater than zero, then we know that there is enough pizza. If the number of slices per person is below one, then there isn't enough pizza for the group. The problem with this existing code is that the number of people in the program is zero. When this is evaluated in the if statement, it produces an arithmetic exception error because num slices is being divided by zero. We can avoid this problem by adding an and operator and the condition num people is not equal to zero. Now when the program runs, the initial Boolean condition num people is not equal to zero evaluates to false as num people is equal to zero. Because the first expression evaluates to false, the second expression in the if statement is not evaluated and the program prints that there's not enough pizza. If we change the number of people to 5, then the program will change. When the first condition of the expression is evaluated, num people is not equal to 0 evaluates to true, as 5 is not equal to 0. And then the second expression is tested. In this case, the result of the second expression is true, as num slices 10 divided by num people 5 is greater than 0. If the value of num people were greater than 10 and num slices stayed the same, the second expression would evaluate to false, and the else statement would be printed. Now that we've learned about logical operators, let's go back to the password strength method that we created. Using the explanation of what we want our method to do, we can create a new Boolean expression. First, we need to write the initial condition. In this case, we want to know if the password is greater than 8. Because there is another condition that we want to evaluate, we need to add a logical operator. The word AND indicated that we want to know if both things are true, so we should use the AND operator. The next part is adding the second condition. We can actually test if a string starts with a particular character by using the method starts with. Starts with returns a Boolean value based on the value of str. If str is equal to the beginning characters of the string, then it will return true. We will add this second condition to the expression to test if password starts with a pound sign. Now that we've finished the Boolean expression, we can fill in what we'd like to happen if that condition is true. In this case, we want to print password strength good if the password meets both conditions. The final component to this method would be to add the else statement that prints password strength bad if the password doesn't meet the criteria for either. But what if we wanted to improve this even more? Instead of just writing that the strength of the password was bad, we want to add a specific message to tell the user what they need to do in order to improve their password. For example, if the password is 8 characters long but doesn't start with a pound sign, we want to print, you need to include a pound sign at the start of your password. If the password is less than 8 characters, we want to print, make sure your password is 8 characters long. We can actually achieve this by nesting if statements within one another. Nesting is the process of placing a control structure within another control structure. We can actually put if statements inside if statements to make our programs even more complex. Here is an implementation of the password strength using nested if statements. Let's look at how this works. Here's an example where the password is greater than 8 characters but does not have a pound sign at the beginning. The initial if statement evaluates to true and executes the code within the if statement. 
The first statement inside the if statement is another if statement, so the program evaluates that if statement. Because the second if statement evaluates to false, the else statement is executed, which indicates to the user that they have not started the password with a pound sign. In this example, the password has both a pound sign and eight characters. The first if statement evaluates to true, and thus initiates the second if statement, which is inside the first. Because the second if statement also evaluates to true, the code inside the second if statement is executed and prints that the password is good. If the password starts with a pound sign, but the number of characters is less than eight, the initial if statement will evaluate to false. The else statement is initiated as a result, and the printed result tells the user that their password isn't long enough. The second if statement isn't evaluated because it's nested inside the initial if statement and will only execute if the initial if statement evaluates to true. Let's try to do one of these on our own. Create a method is healthy that returns true if the user is healthy. A user is healthy if their temperature is lower than 100.3 and greater than 95.6. Feel free to use nested if statements or logical operators. If you need some time to think about how to solve this, you can pause the video. Here are the steps that we could take to complete this problem. First, we need to create the method signature. We know that the name should be is healthy and the return type should be Boolean because we are returning a Boolean value. The parameter for this method should be the user's temperature so we can evaluate whether or not they are healthy. We know it needs to be a double value so that it can be evaluated against 100.3 and 95.6, which are double values. Now we need to create the Boolean expression that evaluates if the user is healthy. In this case, we can write an if statement that tests if temp is greater than 95.6 and less than 100.3. If that expression is true, we want to return true. Otherwise, we want to return false. While this solution is technically correct, we can actually shorten this method to be more efficient. Because the if statement in this program evaluates to true or false depending on the user's temp, we don't actually need the if statement to separate the two return values. We can actually just return the Boolean expression that we want to evaluate. If temp falls between those two values, then the return value will be true. Otherwise, it will be false. This is one way we can simplify our programs. Now that you've learned about compound Boolean expressions, let's get some practice using them in the editor.